Hey Google, turn on the lights. Yes, it's a magic party house now, woo. Hey everyone, it's Athene and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I have a super special project. Um, I have a nano leaf hack. Now I've had my nano leaf panels for I think three years. Um, two of those years they've been lying under the coffee table, not doing much because um, I haven't really had a spot for them. And in my current place, we have, I guess, a living room area that we use as uh, a space for our computers. And that area doesn't have any sort of light fixture in it. So there's no like pendant lamps or anything like that, or um, any sort of fixture in the ceiling where I could attach a light. Um, I think it's expected because it's a living room you're supposed to be like, or at least that portion is supposed to be the living room. Um, you're supposed to watch TV there and you'd want it darker. So they expect you to have, I guess, floor lights or something like that. Um, so there's only like wall sockets to plug actual lamps into. Um, but I figured since I have the nano leaf panels, they make really good lights and they're super lightweight. So I could just like stick them up onto the ceiling and they will just stay there with maybe some tape or something like that. So yeah, today's project is going to be figuring out a way to connect all my panels together with a little bit of space because I don't want them connected directly to each other like you do in a normal setup and have it connect to my Google Home so I can yell at it to turn the lights on uh, without having to go and like switch them on with my app or anything like that. So yeah, that's today's goal and let's see how we get along with this project. One of the first things I actually had to do for this project was clean up the backs of all of the nano leaf panels. The original way I had them installed was as a wall hanging in the shape of a heart. And because I used the 3M command strips to hook them to the wall, I had to make sure they were extra secure and weren't gonna fall off the wall. So I actually went flip the shape over and duct taped it all together so that I knew every panel was gonna stay stuck to itself. So yeah, there was a lot of picking and peeling of tape. After I was done cleaning all the panels, I went and traced one out onto a piece of paper and then cut out 12 of these shapes so that I could place them along the ceiling and see which positioning I liked the best. Okay, so I think this is the situation we've settled on. Uh, we've got two kind of bracketing the figure wall and then um, the rest of the nano leaf tiles just kind of like spread out in various orientations and then they go all the way down to the corner there. Pretty happy with the way this turned out. I think we have just enough of them to actually like look nice uh, if they're spaced out. I tried to make them more or less evenly spaced. Uh, I didn't measure them because I just wanted them to appear even and um, depending on the angle and where the placement is, that doesn't necessarily mean it's actually correctly spaced. Um, so I just wanted them to look visually pleasing more so than actually be accurate. So that's what we have. I do wish we had one more here so I could move that to the corner, but I mean the books are there too, so it doesn't really matter too much. And I think um, the two angle brackets framing the shelf would look really cool there anyway. So that's the placement. Now I gotta figure out how to get the wiring to work. All right, so time for the complicated part. I have the original controller that came with the nano leaf. I'm not actually changing anything to this one. I'm gonna use it as is. It probably needs a firmware update because I haven't turned this on for two years and I guarantee they've made some changes to it. And I also haven't installed the app, which I should probably do. Um, so first up, I'm gonna actually plug this into one panel 
and see if it still works and get it to work on our Wi-Fi. Because I remember last time I had a whole bunch of issues. I might actually need to clean these. These are kind of gunky. So anyways, um, so that's step one is we're gonna plug this in to make sure it still works and connects correctly. Um, step two is I have these old uh, connectors that came with it, uh, the original packaging. I think I have, let's see how many I have. I've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So I've got 11 of these old connectors here. I'm gonna use these to practice because I actually ordered in a bunch of these newer style connectors from Nanoleaf. Um, they're the lighter and more flexible kinds of connectors and those are what I'm going to use to actually connect all the leaves together. Um, so these I'm going to use as my testers to figure out how to solder them and make sure that they all still work when I try and connect the leaves or I guess the triangles. <laughs> um, the triangle panels with a distance in between them and see if um, the wire is capable of carrying the signal. It should be, but you never know. Um, so yeah, let's uh, get cracking. As I had expected, connecting the Nanoleaf was actually a big pain in the butt. Because the firmware on the actual controller was so old and the app that I had downloaded was a newer version, it had a lot of trouble connecting to the actual device. There was a lot of factory resetting, a lot of turning on and off, a lot of restarting, clearing the cache. I eventually did end up getting the new firmware uploaded to the device and since then I haven't had any problems connecting to the Wi-Fi or even controlling it with my Google Home. So once you get over that hurdle, it's pretty much easy going from there. Okay, so I think I figured out the problem. I took a look at um, this connector. When I plugged them in originally, I had mapped um, all of these four connectors. Sorry, the 3D printer's running. Um, I'd map all four of these connectors to the same order on this pin. Um, if you take a look at the actual tabs, they are actually flipped. So if you follow the um, connectors, the way that they pin them, pin them through the front and back, um, you can actually see that this one here is opposite tab. That means that this tab has to be in the reverse order, basically. So if I have blue, red, yellow, green here, this side has to be um, essentially mirrored. So when it gets plugged in, it's crossed over. So now, ugh, if you stick it in here, ugh, eh. And then we stick it over in here. Now this panel works. So yeah, just had to make sure that my um, orders are correct. So now if you look, the orders are reversed here. So this one starts with a blue and ends uh, with a blue on this side. So we've got, uh, what did I see? Blue, red, yellow, green. And then this side goes green, yellow, red, blue. So there you go. So now I just got to make a bajillion of these, um, the correct length, and then we should be good to go. I also sorted out how to attach this thing to the Google Home. So now, hey Google, turn off the Nanoleaf. Sure, turning Nanoleaf light panels off. 
Huzzah! Everybody's happy. So all the panels are up and secured all the way along. So now the only thing I have left to do is now measure the distance between the two points where the panels are going to connect and create the custom sized connectors for them. All right, so I've been testing out the nano leafs and they work really well, except the animation for some of the scenes that you can do are not the greatest uh, because this is the problem. So right now the nano leaf thinks it's in this configuration uh, because of the way that I've wired it. So because I've placed these uh, panels kind of sporadically and uh, rotated haphazardly because I wanted a more random effect, the links to how they're connected end up making it think that it's got some circles here. So when you do animations uh, of the light passing through the nano leaf panel setup, it doesn't look quite right uh, in terms of how it's actually set up. So what I need to do is rotate some of these panels um, or rather where they're connected in order to trick it into thinking that it's one straight line because then the animations will flow from this side all the way out to that side. Um, so I've got to figure out which of these panels I need to change the connectors so that it'll think it's a straight line. All right, so to adjust these connectors, I obviously don't want to re-solder these bits because they took so long to do. Um, and I really don't want to have to deal with re-soldering them and messing up potentially the perfectly well connected ends to this. So what I'm actually going to do is cut the wire in half and I'm going to use heat shrink tubing and some extra wire to basically just cut them, twist them and extend the wire in the middle um, and that should do the trick just fine. I'm also going to hot glue the ends where the connectors are openly soldered. This is mostly just to protect them from moisture and any other interference that could get onto these tabs and potentially short, short circuit my nano leaf. I've been doing some experiments to figure out how I want to hide or at least contain the wires. So what I've settled on is using this uh, frog tape. Um, it's normally used for masking off borders and things uh, when you're doing walls, but I know paint sticks really well to this and it's actually quite strong. I'm using the green, which is the standard, I believe. Um, so what I've done is covered the wires with the green masking tape and then just painted over it with ceiling paint. So that's two coats. 
this is one coat and that hasn't been done yet. So this is what I do, I just like grab uh, little pieces and then just kind of contain the wires and stick them up to the ceiling. So this way, hopefully, probably after three coats, because you can still see a little green there. Um, after three coats, you won't really notice the wires all that much. And because the ceiling paint is matte, you hopefully won't see too much of the edges of the tape. Like if you look close, you can definitely tell that there is tape there and it was painted over. But I mean, it's not that bad. My other solution would be to like actually gouge into the drywall and like tuck the wires up and then, yeah, I don't know. I feel like that's more work and also way more permanent. Whereas this, I can basically just peel the frog tape off and then it's fine. So yeah, we're just gonna keep going with that and see how it looks. This is what it looks like with all of the paint done. Oh my god, I actually really like how it turned out. You can't really see the tape all that much. Uh, and I actually ended up doing only two coats of paint on the rest of the panels um, because I let it dry overnight and then did a second coat and that seemed to help quite a bit. There is a little bit of space where I had to touch up a little bit of paint, um, but it looks pretty good. You can't really tell that there is tape there. You can definitely tell there's a wire there, but I was expecting that. So yeah. Oh man, I'm pretty excited. This looks pretty good. And that's it for this project. Uh, I'm super happy how it turns out. One, it gives a ton of extra light in the computer area that I have over there. Uh, it, there's no actual ceiling length there, so it's always been really dark. Um, so now I've got um, these nano leaves actually on the soft rainbow animation, which is like a white light, but with a little bit of a tint. So it's really great to lighten up the entire area. And it's really fun to have it for parties too, because I can put it on a party mode and blink crazy lights and whatnot. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. I love that I was able to separate them. And hopefully this gives you guys a little bit of courage and um, some instructions on how to do the hack yourself. It's pretty simple to do. You just need to have a lot of patience because there's a lot of soldering to do. <laughs> but yeah, see you next time.